All right. I figured now is as good a time as any to explain to people what happened to me with my health. Why over the past several years I've just gone MIA. Um, but of course, most importantly, why why have you lost so much weight, Gavin? I mean, you can see. Um, Compared to I used to be, I'm very skinny, my muscles are slowly coming back. But what took place, guys, in 2018, so this was pre-so-called, emphasis on the so-called pandemic, I took a, an antibody called Augmentin. Normally I let my body ride things out, but I was so sick, I was just like, man, I just want to get done with this. It had been over two weeks. I think I was actually going for three weeks and I was just coughing incessantly, insomnia. So I went to the doctor and I said, just give me something. Give me something strong. Gave me augmentin. And it gave me a near fatal liver injury. It almost actually killed me. So I lost close to 45 pounds, uh, 20 kilograms, close to 20 kilograms. And anybody that knows, I was extremely ripped. So I had under 8% body fat. So I had a little muscle. Uh, my hair was falling out, it was going yellow. I would scratch on my body and get horrible rashes. I haven't fully processed it, so I'm not going to even try to describe all of it because that's a hurricane and a storm in my life that I haven't yet sat down to fully comprehend. And part of that is because the present journey that I'm on is so demanding and commanding of my attention that I, it's more significant that I focus on that rather than on the past. When the time's right, and I've got a moment, sure, I'll reflect on, on the past. But that's what happened. Went to the doctors, went to all kinds of specialists. Long story short, none of them could figure out what's going on with me. They went through all kinds of so-called diagnosis, uh, eventually saying that I have unspecified colitis, which is a, a way of trying to sound intelligent and clever and academic but what you're saying in translation, we translate that to layman terms, means I don't know what the fuck is going on, but I still want to sound smart. The most recent thing uh, this dude said, very nice guy, liver surgeon, he said he thinks that I have some kind of form of PSE, primary, primary sclerosis cholangitis, and uh, irritable, bowel, irritable bowel syndrome. And they've said this before, and PSE, I mean, I don't even like to say it out loud, but it's a it's a fatal autoimmune condition. It's potentially fatal. It doesn't have the greatest life expectancy. Now, after all of that happened, um, this actually happened in the wake of all of the censorship. Um, and the censorship just tanked me financially. So it happened when I was already, already financially very vulnerable and down, just broke. <laughs> then on top of that, I ended up getting my fiance pregnant. And I know you're thinking, yeah, that's so responsible. Well, the gynecologist, the professional again, showed us this elaborate thing when we went to go see him. You know, some kind of thing that they scan. Showing why she could never get pregnant. It's physically impossible. <laughs> and then my little boy was on his way. And that was my biggest fear. I became aware of that. My biggest fear in life was to have a child. But it has proven, in spite of this great storm that I've been going through in my life. He's proven to be the best thing that ever happened to me. He's, he's a magic. He's so magic out of the food. <laughs> we joke sometimes with my sister that he, and also my fiance, that he, he was looking, you know, if souls do cho uh, choose to come to this planet and this reality, whatever the fuck you want to call it, <laughs> And he said, man, that dude needs my health. Let me go down there. Let me go up there. Let me go wherever that is, right? And man, he's just been such a special, amazing guy. And I never, I haven't told people about this for so long because I wanted to overcome it before I spoke about it, right? I'm, I'm still, my health is still not good. I still have pains, uh, inexplicable random pains. Um, I'm living with a chronic autoimmune disorder that can be or whatever the fuck it is I don't even want to label it because they don't know what it is that can potentially take your life 
at a young age. And as a new dad, that's you don't want to hear that shit, right? But deep down within me, I'm optimistic. I don't believe I never. I've never been one to subscribe to the conventional way of thinking because the conventional way of thinking is always bullshit. It's always limited. It's always nonsense. Doesn't mean that you need to be living in denial, but you also live within your own body. And all the healing that I have done thus far on my journey has not been at the hospital. It's not been through the conventional Western medicine system. It's been through my own intuition and following my heart, not the crowd. So why am I telling you this now? Because I realize and recognize that all around the world, there are people just like me. That you have some kind of inexplicable illness, they don't know what it is. And of course, there's all these kind of egotistical, um, annoying baggages that these uh, doctors and so on and so forth with their inflated sense of self carry with them. So oftentimes they'll turn around and say that they'll try to trivialize it, which is what they try to do with me. But I know there's many of you on this journey and it's scary. And you don't know how it's going to turn out. And what I've learned in my life, guys, I've been through all kinds of bullshit. If you really want to understand how to subjugate and overcome, let's say, depression, you need to go to somebody that has already overcome depression, but they find themselves in that position again. So they're actually feeling what you're feeling. The other people, when you go to these motivational speakers and these health gurus and these people who are financially at 110%, physically at 110%, mentally at 110%, they're on a, on a different level of perception, intuition, and understanding. They cannot truly understand how you're feeling, but I can. I know what it feels like to live in your own body and be scared. I know what it feels like to start to develop the anxiety and depression that invariably um, comes with a chronic physical illness because the mind is actually, it's, it's the whole dynamic. It's not just up, yeah, it's your body. You have skin receptors. You have all kinds of things going on, which is why with our limited science, our limited understanding and interpretation and capability to measure objective reality, we actually have studies that show that chronic illness results in chronic, uh, chronic mental health problems and vice versa because it's one big mind. So me sharing this is because if I am to live my life in alignment with the truth, which is what I strive for, to live in alignment with integrity, to live in alignment with moral courage, and doing that which is easy, I mean, <laughs> doing that which is uh, right rather than easy, and trying to be a guide to the best of my capability for those who feel lost. I need to, you need to go on this journey with me. I need to be real. I need to say, look, I don't know if I'm going to make this journey the whole way. Deep down inside, I do believe that I am. But I need to be transparent about it. And I need to let you know that whatever you're going through, the most courageous thing you can do is not let fear control you. Learn how to have courage. And just to be, to clarify courage as the great saying goes it's not the absence of fear guys it's the recognition that there's something more important than your fear and that might be your loved ones that might be leaving a message in this world that might be living your life as uh, the film gladiator said just to paraphrase the dude he said death smiles at us all all you can do is smile back so live courageously, guys, and remember that to have courage, it's not the absence of fear. It's learning how to take action in spite of fear. And when you do that, that's heroic. And I, I'm actually giving you this message now. What made me think of it is I'm high up in the mountains. It's raining. The climate's not great. My screen is completely wet. And as you can see, it's very misty. And I don't actually know where I am. Right, I'm going towards the top of the mountain because that's where we are. We're at the top of the mountain. That's, that's where we're living. I went to go get some things from the so-called shop. Going shopping takes on a whole other meaning. But what occurred to me, because when you think and you look with the right mind, when you 
try to be as optimistic as possible. We are looking for lessons in the inexplicable beauty and power of nature. And that great transcendent power, which I call God, you can call it whatever you want. You see lessons and whispers and communications everywhere. And what I see when I look around is that yeah, you can't really see. It's misty, it's rainy. I don't know exactly where I am, but I know that I have to go to the top of this mountain. So even though I can't clearly see, if I keep on walking, if I keep on moving forward, I'm going to get to the top of the mountain. And not to be too heavy, but death is something that none of us can escape. We all must meet it in such a way that we don't have regrets. That we know that we pushed hard, that we tried hard. And I, again, I'm not trying to be heavy, guys. I'm not saying that, like, I think, I, I think for me, this is just the beginning. I ain't scared at all. And I believe that uh, God and nature is riding with me. You see, I'm out just looking wild, man. I mean, I, I've got my bare feet. Getting back to nature, because I believe that nature is going to heal me. Um, and there's a lot to be said about that, because what they are doing systematically, the eugenics establishment, people can look into my work on this. They are poisoning us, guys. That's why there's all these inexplicable illnesses, I believe, amongst other reasons. And it's not accidental. But whatever the next chapter brings, I'm not scared. Um, let me say, not that I'm not scared, but I'm courageous. Meaning that, yeah, I feel fear sometimes. There's days when I want to give up. There's days when I feel like shit. But I do it anyways. And I try to focus as best as I can on the positive and not the negative. And of course, it's, it's difficult when you've got a chronic illness, when you feel depression, when you feel these heavy things that weigh you down. But just take it one step at a time, guys. Know that what is deep within you is far stronger than what surrounds you, what's in front of you. And I say that from somebody that has gone through the experience, and it's not unique to me. We don't know the power of that which is within us because we aren't forced into these circumstances. That's why you see paraplegic people in the Olympics, they got one arm, one leg, and they swim better than you do. Because fate, life, circumstances have thrust them in a position where they've had to tap into other uh, potentials of their soul. And we all have this potential. They just want us to forget it. So let me be on my journey. And I'll see you at the top of the proverbial mountain.